Hey, honey, our electric bill was pretty high this this month. I think you need to go call somebody and have them check out our thermostat. You need to call anybody. It's a waste of good money. I'll just go down to Walmart and buy myself a thermostat and, and put it on, and we'll be good to go. Not a big deal. I'm wasting money on HVAC company stuff. Do that myself. Thank you very much. I don't know. The last time you tried to fix something, it cost us way more money than just it would have cost if we had just called somebody out the first time. I don't know if I'm that, sure about that, that. That was just a glitch, okay? I know what I'm doing. I'm a guy. I can fix stuff. I fixed the car, remember that? Yeah, and then it caught on fire. Uh, it, it won't be like that again. It's just a thermostat. It's a couple wires and a couple screws. I'll take care of it, honey. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about, honey. <laughs> It'll be different this time, I promise, baby. That's what you said last time. Honey. Okay, so in case you haven't figured it out, today's video is on thermostats. Or proximity thereof. This is, I don't know, so much geared towards um homeowners as it is as well towards uh, technicians because i go out a lot of the calls every spring and every fall as seasons changing uh and not always it changing but relating to thermostat issues that could have easily been avoided had uh some precautions been taken uh, like hiring someone to come out and do it and sometimes uh technicians actually reading the effing instructions that came with thermostat which is kind of nice too so um, I have brought a few thermostats here uh, off of my junk pile we have a standard um, mercury thermostat these come in a, these things get the little mercury bulb some of the newer ones have magnets instead and uh, this one here is a digital non-programmable and this is a uh, digital programmable capable of doing heat pumps and uh, gas and all kinds of other goodies stuff too. And there's other versions of it out there. We have, uh, I have a higher end one on my wall here, made by Honeywell as well. And uh, you've probably seen some of the guys put these on their videos or whatever, but, but uh, so I have stuff like that. And I even have uh, the original thermostat, which I took off the wall here, which is a little, uh, little one that actually has magnets inside of it. So, and this just has a couple magnets. And it did a fine job as well. So, there's a, a wide variety of thermostats that you can choose from to do the job. Now, the very first thing you need to do if you're changing a the thermostat, the well, first thing I would suggest is hire someone to do it. Okay? Just save yourself a headache and hire somebody to do it. But, irregardless, the first thing you do is shut off power to the unit. And, when you go to the breaker box, and we're going to go back to the breaker box over here. I have a breaker box right here, which has got a bunch of junk in front of it. And you will see, uh, da, 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 this one says AC. AC does not turn off the power to the thermostat 99.9% .9 of the time. You need to look for the heat. And in this case, my heat says mine are clearly labeled furnace. And I have one, two of them here. So you have to actually take a look for that and check that to make sure that you have power cut off to the furnace. Some of the furnaces will have uh, cut off switches on them. Sometimes there's two, three, four breakers on the things. Uh, you need to check voltages on them. All right, well. I've taken my thermostat off. You need to check for voltage, even after you shut off the breakers, even if you're sure. I have my terminals here on the common and on the uh, power R here, and I'm showing 27 volts. If you don't have a common for some reason, and a lot of them don't, you can check from power to uh, any of the other terminals. There's a G, you can check common to G and it will show 27 volts. You're just trying to see if you have power from the R to whatever. Okay, if you have voltage, then you know something's not shut off. That's the first step to changing the thermostat, is uh, doing that. And uh, we'll go from there. Make sure you have enough wires. It's a good thing to do, too. Can you pull, is there enough wires to pull out of the wall so you can access your next one? Does your next uh, thermostat that you're putting on there actually have 
have enough spacing around uh, all the stuff that you need to do to get it get it to fit. I mean, how's the how's the thermostat mount compared to the old one? Uh, are you going to have enough room? And do you have the right thermostat? That's another big issue. Do you have the right thermostat? Did you buy the right thermostat? Depending on the type of system you have. If you have a heat pump system and you bought just a regular heat, regular cool thermostat, it's not going to work. If you buy a thermostat that says it's good for a heat pump, it may not have a setting on there for auxiliary emergency heat. Some of them don't. Uh, you need to know what you're buying, too. They all plug in differently. There's a lot of stuff to, to sort out here. The mounting is just one of the important things. Programmables bring a special whole new issue, and I run across a lot of problems with these every year because someone installs them properly. It's easy to get your terminals confused because they'll put heat pump terminals on one side and straight cool terminals markings designators on the other. And if you don't program that thermostat properly, and I don't mean program it like when to shut on, when to shut off, program it for what kind of system you're using, you'll have all kinds of problems. I go out every year and they'll have uh, a straight cool system with a gas furnace and it's trying to run a heat pump so the gas is coming on outside I mean and the furnace is coming on upstairs and the air conditioner is coming on too because someone didn't program it properly so if you buy something like that a Honeywell which is programmable for a bunch of different options you need to save not only the regular programming manual but the installation manual because if I come out to your house to work on it and you don't have both manuals that's it baby so there's a lot of different things to consider. Um, guys, installing these, remember, you have to program these suckers. On these, like here's an interesting one here, they have the, the heat anticipators on here, which means you need to take an amp reading of your transformer, low voltage side of the transformer, and set your uh, anticipator to match it. If you have 0.4 amps or 0.6 amps, you need to set your anticipator properly. That one has one on it set. Uh, I don't think this one does. This one have one to set. This one does too. This one has a slide anticipator set on it as well. And uh, so that's something else you have to worry about as well. Um, some of them you have other settings like this particular one here. This has a uh, heat pump or non-heat pump. This is, doesn't have a program to set it like this one. This is, has switches. So if you have a heat pump, it has to be a heat pump or not. Celsius or Fahrenheit switch. It has a switch over here for gas or electric. This is very important because that tells the thermostat what it needs to do with the fan. Does it need to turn the fan on itself or should it let the unit turn the fan on? There's a lot of important stuff that you don't want to be screwing up uh, when you install one of these. So there's a lot of a lot of things. And don't get me wrong, a lot of homeowners install thermostats themselves and have no problem. But is it worth the hassle? Go ahead, pay the service fee, even if you buy your own thermostat uh, and you're sure you know what thermostat you're buying, go ahead and pay a service technician to come out and install the thing. You'll save yourself a headache in the long run. Plus, you know, his work's warrantied, he her or her work's warrantied, and you don't have to fool with it. And you have the benefit of having it done a pretty good job. So there you go. Anyway, those are the basics I wanted to cover. Um, all kinds of stuff. This one has magnets. That one has mercury. This one has none of the above. Manual programming on this. Some of them have batteries. Um, like the thermostat I showed you on my wall has a common terminal, but if you don't have a common terminal, then you have to have, or the wiring for a common terminal, sometimes you can't even get the wiring, uh, enough wires run over there, so you have to have a thermostat that has batteries. Uh, typically on the digitals anyway, to power the, the thermostat. Or in this case, you know, if you have a manual, you don't have to have that because it does all stuff manually. But uh, a lot of things to take in consideration. It's not just a simple, quick change-out fix. So anyway, um, and I'll think of 10 more things as soon as I finish making the video and post it. But uh, this will bring up some more conversation topics, and as I... Uh, come up with some more stuff, I'll post it. I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes, so hence the, uh, uh, the quick rushing through without, a, without an ending script here. Thanks for watching, and uh, post your questions, comments, advice, etc., etc., and uh, keep your pants pulled up.